Um, let's turn around and take a look at uh, U.S. Grant up there. There's some interesting stuff going on with the depiction of Grant, just the way he's portrayed, but then also the relationship between um, the two lower pieces, the cavalry on this side and the artillery on the south side, and where Grant is located. So what do you know about, I mean, what, what's your sort of thumbnail understanding of Grant as a Civil War general? This is after his presidency, which is generally regarded as something of a disappointment. Um, so he's depicted here in his, in his more successful incarnation as a general. You can kind of work backwards from, from there in that one of the reasons that uh, Grant accepted uh, the surrender is that he was the victorious general. And he's the, he is the general after that incredibly tortuous process of trial and error, plugging these guys in. And we covered this a little bit in the summer, you know, that there was a, a revolving parade of generals who had been disastrous, you know, Pope, McClellan, uh, Burnside, Hooker. Hooker, these guys who just could not get it done. And then um, in the summer of 1863, Grant distinguishes himself at Vicksburg, comes west, and it's Grant who is the head of the armies in the last two years of the war um, and who, who finally grinds down the, the uh, Army of Northern Virginia and forces its surrender. How does he do that? Because I think that's a... Picked up on the war of attrition. Okay. The, the, the thing that Grant do, did differently that none of the other generals previous to him did. You know, so many of those generals were about maneuver and about um, you know trying to to get behind Lee's army or trying to get between Lee's army and Richmond and trying to win the war without uh, without fighting a really bloody battle. And Grant was one of the first to embrace a more modern sensibility that said, "You cannot win a war in the." in this day by capturing the enemy capital. You have to win the war by destroying the enemy army. And the only way you can do that is by meeting it on the battlefield and fighting it. And remember, the Union had that huge advantage in its the manpower pool it could, it could draw on, its productive capacity. Um, and the South didn't. The South had a much smaller population and they had much less capacity to produce ammunition and weapons. Um, and what had, been, what had happened in the first two years of the war in a, in a general way is that there would be a big battle and then both armies would kind of pull back. Um, and that allowed the South to keep fighting for a long time. Grant is the first commanding officer who, who really understood that they were going to have to fight them and keep fighting them. And remember when we did the campaigns of 1864, there is just horribly bloody battle after horribly bloody battle from May to July of 1864. And they're fighting a massive, deadly engagement every couple of days. This is the Wilderness and Spotsylvania Courthouse. There are more than 60,000 Union casualties in a, in a six-week period during that point. That's, you know, they're fighting a, a major battle every couple of days. And remember, we were talking about the bottom-up experience, what it's like not just to be a soldier, but to be the wife of a soldier or the mother of a soldier, someone on the home front. And imagine what it's like to get that newspaper every other day and to flip right to the back page, which was called the Butcher's Bill and to read over the individual names uh, and, and be praying that it's not your loved one that's going to be listed there. Uh, and that's kind of an interesting contrast to our 21st century experience. I and mean, we do a lot of the same things today, but you know, in, the, in the Iraq and Afghanistan conflicts, um, you know, four deaths in a day is a, is a horrible tragedy, and it is. But imagine that there are you know, 400 deaths every day and that it just keeps going on and that there are 4,000 deaths someday. It's, this is a, it's a kind of warfare that, that reaches into Union homes, homes in the North, in a way that was really unprecedented. And Grant was extraordinarily unpopular. They, they began to, to get a, um, a, kind, a, 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 a real kind of respect for Grant, who was the total antithesis of a lot of the, the generals they had had before. I mean, McClellan was the little Napoleon. He was always very, you know, turned out. and polished brass and, and very much looked the part of the general. And you can see that Grant doesn't. A lot of the soldiers um, saw him as someone that was more relatable. At the same time, this is a guy who's continually plunging them into battle. Um, in the spring of 1864, um, it's not at all clear that that's going to have a successful conclusion.